mic's on. All right, this day at a little past five has become a one-trick pony, uh, and we again, uh, we thank another very gracious, a classy athlete, and that Andy Pettit. We had scheduled Andy in, in our list of uh, players, like tomorrow we have Mark Messier also. We have uh, scheduled these guys who have been such a big part of the last 30 years in these final days, and we have some of them coming on every day. Uh, Andy was scheduled to be on. We explained him what was going on, so he'll be joining us tomorrow because we told him we had this breaking story that we had to handle. And, of course, rather than he giving us any grief, of course, Andy said he'd do whatever we want. So that's typical Andy Pettit, uh, who you can put in that same uh, vein, put in that same league with uh, Eli Manning as being just one of the classy athletes we have been lucky enough to have around here through the years. Uh, the story, of course, if you're just joining us, the shocking news that the Giants, with five games to play in this pitiful season at 2-9, and nine, have decided to shake up their quarterback situation, telling Eli Manning today that they were going to look at the other quarterbacks beginning this week with Geno Smith in the weeks to come with both Geno Smith and their other youngster. Uh, they were going to look at both he and, and Webb in the weeks to come. And uh, this week... Eli was offered uh, the chance to start to keep the streak alive. He was told he could keep the streak alive the rest of the way, but that he would not play any complete games and that they would look at both quarterbacks, including looking at uh, Geno Smith at least the second half, if not more, of this game coming up this week. And uh, Eli thought that would not be representative and would have tarnished the streak, and he decided to step aside and let them play. So Geno Smith is the quarterback this week. Uh, This week, for this week, uh, only uh, Eli will be number two, and we don't know yet whether uh, Webb will dress. We haven't been told that yet, but he will be active in the weeks to come and will play along with Geno Smith. So Geno Smith, who has been, let's be honest, a journeyman quarterback, has now replaced a quarterback who, if he never plays another game for the Giants, will have thrown for over five fifty thousand yards, three hundred thirty-four touchdowns. Won well over 100 games, well, 110 games to be exact in the regular season. Won eight of 12 postseason starts, including two Super Bowl MVPs with two thrilling wins, uh, both upset wins of uh, the New England Patriots, including one, one of the great upsets in the history of sports when they stopped the unbeaten uh, Tom Brady led Patriot machine in the Super Bowl in Arizona, uh, winning the first of what would be two enormous victories for Tom Coughlin and Eli Manning uh, against the Pats. And the only thing that stands between Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and complete immortality is Eli Manning and his Giants. Because if they had not lost those two games, they would have won seven Super Bowls out of seven. And they would be considered the best of everything in everything, in every way. Uh, if that were the case. So uh, that's what stands between them. And the one team, the Pats, and the one player the Pats have always joked that they don't want to see standing for them in a Super Bowl is the Giants and Eli Manning, who has beaten them both times. He has met them in those games. But who knows this year, if that had ever been the case, the coach might have gone to Geno Smith. Who knows? Since he's the better option. Josh in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. What's up, Josh? Hi, Mike. Um, thanks for taking my call. What's happening? Um, I'm actually I'm only 18 years old. I've only been listening to your show for four years, and I really appreciate. It. I'm going to miss you. Um, and I've you know I've been following football ever since the 2011 season, and the only person that I can ever remember taking a snap on their center for the Giants is Eli. And just watching this coach this year the way he's been handling all the press conferences and the way he's been throwing Eli under the bus has just has just made me really, really upset watching the Giants this year. Well, it's been it's been tough to watch. I know you're young, but it's been tough to watch for a while. It has been. Ryan and Ramsey, what's up, Ryan? Uh, Mike, you hit everything on the head today. I can't believe a guy like Eli Manning, what he's done for this organization, what he's done for families, he's He's been a perfect citizen, uh, comes from a great family, and we just treated him like, like a piece of dirt today. And I, and I can't believe it. I'm disgusted. Totally disgusted. Uh, I, that's been the sentiment. Sam and Rockaway, what's up, Sam? Hey, how you doing, Mike? What's happening? I just called to uh, ex- 
say I lost total respect for the Mara family. And I was speaking to my son. And he said, there's two things to remember. It's 25 below zero in Green Bay. Here's the ball. Get me to the Super Bowl. He does it. Go be two of the most immortal teams of all time. He does it. And now we got Geno Smith. You got to be kidding me. It's, I just don't see it. It's very hard to sell out the Giant fans. Very difficult for that coach in his second year where he has lost his complete way as a coach. No idea what's going on. Players running amok. Uh, if, you know, stuff, chaos, chaos on the team. And now this head coach decides that the answer is putting in Geno Smith to quarterback the team for Eli Manning. You know, the fans who saw this weeks ago with McAdoo and Eli, they were right. You know, they saw that. Some fans bristled about the disrespect. And I just thought it was him just not answering the questions properly. I never thought he would disrespect Manning to the level that he has. But they were right. He's held this quarterback in this contempt for a while. And he's looking for somebody to blame. I guarantee he doesn't think it's his fault. Matt in Manhattan, what's up, Matt? Yeah, um, I'm I'm a huge fan of the Giants. I'm I'm going to take a different view from this, and I'm being totally honest here. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is really in the best interest of the team. I, to see to see Geno Smith. Look, the, the idea this tells me this tells me that the front office has decided that they mm-hmm. really like one of the top quarterbacks. Geno Smith okay. gives the team the best chance to lose by trying. So that's oh, that's so the way it's so be. oh, so you're telling me what they're really doing is trying to throw the game? No. Well, they, they, want, the, so they you want think people they, on the field trying their hardest, but right. they don't want their best people. I mean, teams do this a lot. Well, you I, can't. I you can't. You, the Giants never believe in that. That's been their credo that they don't don't finish seasons that way. That's been the trademark and the hallmark of the Mara teams is that they never give up a game until the season's over That's and fine, never. Take, so you're, now you're telling me that they're now. not doing that. Now you're telling me that they're trying to lose. Well, look, it's it's absurd to say that uh, that that they're going to be better with you know. Well, I mean, wait a second. They just that. said that today. Wait, wait a second. Wait, well, of course they said because they well, can't say no, that no, no. To lose. no. You can't. T- no, listen. I'm I'm Matt. You listen. I understand that you want to take that turn. I really don't believe they think that because that's been their credo. I think they're trying to win this week. I actually think they feel they have a better chance with Geno Smith, which t- which is scary. Because John Mara is not going to give up five games. He's not going to do that. He's not going to tank games. That's not the Mara way that he would not do that because that's not how his father thought. His father was diametrically opposed to that. And so has John been. They like to see how teams finish. They care about things like message and pride and intensity and all that stuff late in the season. They still have home games against the Cowboys, against the Eagles, against the Redskins in their building. And they have told you they don't want to play Eli Manning in those games. They want to play Geno Smith and, and Webb at quarterback. And they can't tell you they're looking at Geno Smith for any length of time. He's a free agent after this year. They're not even going to be here. You're going to tell me they're going to keep him as their quarterback? They want to draft the quarterback after this year and move off Eli Manning. There is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong in this world with that. If they had done that in an admirable way and moved off after this season and drafted a young quarterback and decided to play him right from the start, which I have no problem with because that's what they did with Eli Manning, and they let Kurt Warner go and leave, and Kurt Warner left with dignity and then took Arizona to the Super Bowl. And I don't think you've seen the last of Eli Manning either. That's why, since they feel this way, Go all the way. Show me you really feel this way and cut the player today. Release him. You're done with him? Release him. Let's see what happens where he winds up. Let's see if he winds up on the field this year. See if somebody doesn't have your view. They don't have the guts. Chris in Wallingford, what's up, Chris? Hey, Mike, it can't get more embarrassing than this until the Eagles come in and pummel us by 40. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say a lot of anything different than what other people are saying. I'm a 31-year-old Giants fan, always been a huge Eli fan. My, my friends and I are shocked. The thing that, that I'm confused about is how does this build a winning culture? Like, what's the coach's plan? The year's been abysmal, so this is his solution. The only thing that I can 
sync up is that him and Reese got together and says, listen, we're going to have to try to sell ourselves to ownership at the end of the year. Let's try to say that, okay, we can, you know, we got them playing hard at the end of the year. We don't want Eli on the team. We can take one of these top quarterbacks and build a team. I, I mean, tell me what I you think, think what they're saying. I think what they're saying. I think the only thing I can come through is a little bit on your vein is this. They're saying if what we're saying is that if we had a quarterback who didn't hold the ball so long, who didn't wasn't so immobile, who you know didn't fumble when he gets hit broadside nine thousand times, if we had that, you know what we'd be we wouldn't be as vulnerable as we are right now. Instead of saying you know what we've dropped all these passes, we've done this, we've had no running game, we've had no blocking, and realize what the strengths of the quarterback are, they are trying to make it seem like he. Has has been the problem when let's be honest Jerry Reese forgot about the off he ignored the offensive line then tried to tell you how much Flowers has improved during the season and did you see how many holding calls Flowers got last week Steve joins us what's up Steve Hey, Mike, as a Mets fan and a Jets fan, this, how the Giants have handled this is a hallmark of those two organizations completely bungling a delicate situation like this. And as far as Eli goes, he's going to land on his feet, have another two or three good years, and the Giants are going to have to grovel on their knees to get him to come back and retire his number. Well, you know what? Yeah, the, for what they the hit, what they did to their you know talk about protecting their player or protecting his legacy or anything like that. What he means to the franchise. I mean, to treat one of the players who has been you know a champion for your franchise this way is is disgraceful. It's disgraceful. Justin in Queens, what's up, Justin? Hey, Mike, how's it going? What's happening? Uh, next Monday, who are you going to have on, Eli Manning or Geno Smith? Uh, uh, how about I'll try to have both? That would be terrific, man. I will, I will try. I'll be looking forward to that one. I will, next I, week. I, will, I, mean, I will offer them both the floor, both Gino and Eli. Uh, uh, we will we'll ask for both. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what. We'll, here's what we'll do. We'll put Eli up for 12 minutes. We'll take a break, and then we'll put Gino up. And we'll dress Webb. We'll leave him outside. Just this week. Kareem, what's up, Kareem? Hey, Mike. What's happening? Hey, Mike, today is a travesty orchestrated by Jerry Reese. Jerry Reese should have been fired three years ago. They gave him $60 million to redo the defense. That's the only thing that saved his job all this time. And this year, which has been a mockery of a year with all the injuries, what happened to Beckham, everything that happened, you're going to blame a guy, a Hall of Fame guy like Eli Manning, put it all on his shoulders where everybody should be looking at Jerry Reese. This guy, is he's drafted horribly. He didn't redo the offensive line this year. He's just abysmal, this guy. And to throw a class act like Eli Manning under the bus like they've done today, they're losing everybody in their fan base today. And today, every Giants fan should just protest this team because Jerry Reese must go. And Ben McAdoo, who came in and undermined a great coach like Tom Coughlin, they tried to turn the offense into the New England Patriot offense, knowing that the strength of Eli Manning is not quick passes. The guy got to drop back five to seven steps and throw it deep. He did it with Tuma. He did it with Plexico. And he can do it with with these guys that he has now. They they just they don't understand anything about the quarterback that they have. This guy is a Hall of Famer. This guy brought New York two championships and he, he he's been given nothing over the past three years as far as upgrades with the offensive line. The running game is abysmal. Jerry Reese must go. That should be the the back page of the New York every paper in New York. Jerry Reese and Ben McAdoo must go. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Uh, one more. Josh in New Paltz. What's up, Josh? Good evening, Mike. What's happening? Boy, this has got to be as big a slap in the face fall guy, fall guy job that we've seen that I can remember. Um, I mean, you know, first of all, you know, 
if they want to tank, they don't need to start Geno Smith. They've got a coach who's having a season of rich coat type propor- uh, proportions here. And, you know, you brought up the Jaguars. I'm sure they would accept Eli with open arms. With it, this kind of bad blood is going to it lead to exactly that, him winning another Super Bowl with Coughlin. And you look at Coughlin, ever since he's gone to the Jaguars, the culture's improved. They're everything we've not, we're not, except they don't have a good quarterback, but they're winning with be, being tough on the inside, playing good defense, ball control. I mean, this is just embarrassing and disgraceful. My stomach's turning. I feel so bad for Eli. So much class listening to him. Uh, the callers have been one voice today from the callers. Here's the McMahon. 